discuss uh, a case of uh, constrictive pericarditis and this patient had almost all the features on echocardiography for uh, constrictive pericarditis so it will be a good representative case for uh, a learning purpose a uh, good idea you can subscribe so that uh, the moment i put a new case you would be notified and in this case you know what i'm going to do is that i'm going to take you through clinical features of uh, Elevated JVP would show you XYZ, uh, XY uh, collapse. In the JVP would show you uh, uh, IVS shudder, would show you uh, respiratory variations in inflows, uh, septal motion during uh, inspiration, expiration, hepatic venous flow, flat motion of the posterior wall of the left ventricle, increased uh, velocity propagation across the ventricle, increased E-way velocities in mitral, uh, medial and lateral uh, anuli, and I will show you an algorithm how to follow. So algorithm is very, very important. So do watch this video to the end so that you know how to actually analyze the patient with a specific disease orders to make an assessment of a CCP. Right. So beginning with the first thing is that JVP is elevated in patients with uh, constrictive pericarditis and many other conditions and you have a XY collapse during this and that's a normal uh, JVP waveform and that's the waveform where you have accentuated X and Y uh, descents and look at the descents on this side if you notice here look at the the negative suction or negative uh, uh, wave forms on, on on the neck JVP. The next step what we saw in this patient was a uh, shudder of the interventricular septum Look at the shudder of the interventricular septum like something you would get it in left bundle branch rock and then uh, you see the shudder on a parasternal long axis view, see the shudder on a short axis view and this is quite sensitive and specific for constrictive pericarditis. So please don't miss this otherwise structurally if you see LV uh, parasternal long axis view and short axis you think this LV is normal. Honestly, in this patient, uh, this has been followed up uh, for about 6-7 years in a couple of cardiologists and this finding was missed, CCP was missed. Inspiration variation again is a very characteristic hallmark of constrictive pericarditis which tends to differentiate it from uh, restrictive cardiomyopathy. There is an uh, increased uh, inflow velocity and expiration in LV and on RV there is increased velocities, inflow velocities during inspiration. So that's the difference and this is a very, very, very important and specific sign of constrictive pericarditis. Now you see uh, the movement of the interventricular septum during uh, respiration because during inspiration and expiration the movement of the septum towards LV or away from LV is again a very, very specific sign with a specificity of more than 90%. And this is why it happens is because of uh, interventricular dependence and ventricles are encaged in a very thick pericardium, which does not let the ventricle enlarge independently. And when the blood is more on one side, it tends to push the septum on the other side. Inferior, uh, the inferior vena cava and hepatic venous flows are again very important markers of constrictive pericarditis. In this patient, you see this is an S wave and uh, this is uh, an D wave and that's a diastolic reversal what you see. And during expiration, you see that both S and D waves become uh, small. So does the, the diastolic reversal. So this is again a very important differentiating point from a restrictive cardiomyopathy where respiratory changes of this nature do not happen. Now again uh, that shudder further uh, elaborated on an M mode you can see an early diastolic early diastolic shudder in LBB you see the shudder uh, at the level of the LBB here when you see the QRS complex and you see the shudder here in LBB in CCP you see the shudder here and that's uh, and you have a posterior wall flat motion which is again a characteristic of a constrictive pericarditis. Velocity propagation because of uh, rapid suction of the blood into the LV and in case you do a velocity propagation assessment what we find is that the velocity propagation from 
the annulus to 4 cm above towards the apex, you find the velocities are actually increased there because of the very rapid uh, movement of the blood from LA to LV. And in CCP, if it is more than uh, 100 centimeter per second, it is quite characteristic. In this patient also, it was 150. Medial E wave and lateral E wave E prime uh, annulus velocities are markedly increased in CCP. In you see here in the patient of uh, this is about 23 and the medial uh, E prime in restrictive cardiomyopathy because of the muscle is uh, a week the E prime velocities are lower because that represents muscular movement or muscle strength. So if you have more than 8 uh, centimeter per second it is uh, favor of constrictive pericarditis less than 6 actually indicates a restrictive cardiomyopathy with the sensitivity and specificity which is very very high. So these are the various uh, parameters which you can uh, actually make an assessment. These are the sensitivity and specificity of uh, uh, the various like in this patient we had a ventricular septal shift which has sensitivity of 93 percent and you know the most specific here had been hepatic venous uh, flow with a specificity of 88 percent. So in this patient we had a good signs. How do you follow an algorithm? The very first thing when you find that mitral uh, flow EA ratio is more than 8 and you have a dilated inferior vena cava and the LV function and RV functions are fine, then what is the next step? Next step is you look for respiratory phasic variation of the septum, the septum shift. Okay, If this is present, then, then we have a whole lot of things. The, if the, the E and A, uh, this is absent, that means constriction and restriction is ruled out. In case respiratory shift is present, you start suspecting that there is a restrictive physiology and that restrictive physiology, in case the E prime is more than 8, you start thinking on the constrictive pericarditis. Less than 6, you start thinking on restrictive pericarditis. But once you have mitral E prime which is lateral one is more than the medial one which we call as a annulus reverses and then this most likely constrictive pericardite. Add on with that in case you have hepatic venous flow which are abnormal this is definitive constriction. So in our patient there was a definitive constriction uh, on an echocardiographic parameters and we got a CT scan done for uh, thickening of the pericardium and the calcification and you can see notice patchy, patchy calcification in AV groove and anterior aspect of the pericardium and there was a thickened pericardium making a diagnosis of constrictive pericarditis where you can suggest this patient for uh, a pericardiectomy. Uh, keep looking for uh, the more and more uh, videos and the good idea to subscribe and that's how we would actually come to know when I'm posting a new video. Why and happy learning.